I didn't do anything that's bad. I just want to do my own thing. What's wrong with that? Well, the Bible in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17, tells us this. Yes, you want to be happy, you want to do your own thing, get along your own self, whatever you want, without God. Doesn't matter, you didn't hurt anybody. Book of James chapter 4, verse 17 tells us this. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That already put you in a very difficult situation. You know the good you want to do, you didn't do. Because how can you do good when you are self centered? You don't care about anybody. You just want to be with part of people. But you didn't hurt people, yeah. To a lot of people, I didn't hurt people means I do good, but actually it's not true. When you see somebody fell into the long gun, did you go down and help put the blood out of the long gun? That is called doing good when you know that you can do it. But if you didn't do it, you have seen it. Do you want to continue in the lines that Satan put forth for you? To be sold on self, being self-centered, is to be sold to Satan. Remember the three temptations of Jesus by Satan. Satan will always take you out of God's kingdom by doing this to you. In the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 10, which I'm not going to read, I just want you to go back and read. Here he's talking about the temptation of Jesus. What had been promised by Satan? Because Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, and Satan told Jesus, why don't you turn this stone to pray? What is Satan trying to do to Jesus? He is tempting Jesus on the physical needs now. And you as a human being, as I've said, our mortal body is still not taken away. But your spirit is has been renewed by the Spirit of God. Now how do you, with the Spirit of God, overcome the physical needs? Like Paul, we study, he passed. When we are hungry, do you give up God? When somebody dangles a piece of knife, you see break in front of you, with the caveat that you must follow him, then follow God. And Satan is doing that. Nice morsels for you to eat. Do you want to follow me or follow God? You follow God, you got nothing to eat. You follow me, you got all these nice morsels to eat. So that is the temptation, the break. And I have said earlier, many people will say, I need to work to feed my family. That is great. I need to work very, very hard because I do not have enough for my children's education. That is a physical need. Then the second part of temptation, Jesus was taken up to the highest part of the temple, the city where there is a temple and seated there and he was shown. All these things that is beneath, jump down, jump down and call for all the angels to come and save you. The angels of angels come and save you. And again, Jesus rebuked Satan. What is Satan trying to do now? To show to Christ that you need security, you need protection. Right? When you are in high places, you need security and protection. When you as a human being now, when you go up into the circle of life, when you go up in your job prospect, go to the higher point you go and wherever you go, you may think you won't fall. Because you have all the security and the protection. The full security and protection that Satan is giving to you. And that's why human beings are trying to reach to the highest pinnacle in their life. Achievement. But then, is there security that Satan promises you? The third temptation, Jesus was taken up to the highest point of city again and shown everything, the beauty of the world that he can own if only will bow down and worship Satan. Now Satan says, I do all these things. What is Satan trying to tempt Jesus with now? Control, authority, power, and lust. As a human being again, 
when Satan dangles his carrot in front of you. Hey, brother Henry, you can be the number one in your direct sales company, earning sixty thousand a month. Wow, good money. Security comes in now. You can all the things that work. You want a must buy a must. What is that sixty thousand a month? Now these are all the things that Satan is going to put in front of you. You can be a CEO of a company, and when you shout, everybody will follow you. When you say something, even though it's wrong, people say yes, it's right, right? Because you're a CEO. Now this kind of control, authority, and power, and last for the things of the world is what Satan is going to dance in front of you. And as a new creature in the kingdom of God, he is even going to be dangling more to you. At the point when you are most subtle, when you are a young child or a young baby or a young plant, you are at your most destructive, uh, easily destructible situation, right? Huh? Like a child, all the parent has to do is strangle and protect you. Just like a little plant, don't give water, squash, and the plant is dead, right? Anything that is small is this portion. So at this point, when you are most vulnerable, Satan is going to dangle the brain, the high places, and the kingdoms of the world in front of you. You want it or not? As a Christian, you have to come to church on Sunday when your friends are in the park enjoying themselves. As a Christian, you study the Word of God when your friends are all reading all kind of uh, juicy materials from the internet. I want to fight. You have to give up this and give up that. Satan said, Come, join me, forget about God. You have no time for all these things. You are still in the physical flesh. You can still suffer pain when somebody beats on you. Where is the Spirit of God helping you? Satan will say all this to you, for sure. And he will do this to you lastly. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life, he will now. Then go right in front of you. Do you get tempted by him? Only you will know. I will know. Not honestly. Yeah. Now, if we are converted and belong to Christ, we must submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That God has made the same Jesus whom He have crucified, no Lord in Christ. We must submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ because. God has put everything under Him. The next thing that we must do as Christians is a position in our life where we must put priority now. Our priority of being a Christian is above family, above life, and above self. In the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 to 39, the Bible tells us that if you have to put a family is your husband, your wife, your children ahead of God, something is wrong. You must put God ahead of them. If you must put your own life, the things that you want to do in your life ahead of God, ahead of yourself, something again is wrong. You must put God ahead of all these things. And that is what Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 39 is telling us. Where is your priority once you are a new creation? I am very glad to see our young Christian like um, what's the name? I always forget Calvin. Such a young Christian and he's willing to come forward here to read the word of God. And I believe he takes that with a lot of uh, excitement, right? Calvin? He enjoy reading the word of God. Now this is a growth that we are seeing, a new creation that we in the transformation we are seeing. And just like the sister as well. They are transforming, taking all the bread and the fruit of the wine, put it here for us, that we can take a lot of supper. They are transformed. But we also know that Sister Iwan is helping them. And the point of their most vulnerable state is she is nurturing them. If she is not doing all these things, when they grow up this with the Folks in the school, they may also transform back to their old self. And many of our children, at one time in their life, will be confronted with this position. What should I do? Should I continue with a lot or should I follow my peers? 
But if you allow the word of God to abide in you forever, you should be well taken care of. The Bible also tells us that once we belong to Christ, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. 